welcome back to another video here on Sam's Crafty Castle. And today I have a video about digi stamps or digital stamps for you. So if you're not familiar with digi stamps, uh, basically they are stamps that you buy on your computer and live on your computer. So if you're more tr familiar with traditional stamps like rubber stamps, clear stamps, those kind of things, uh, digi stamps work the same way. You just don't get a physical product in your hand. It just lives permanently on your computer, which is great for storage because your computer stores them all for you and you don't have to find room in your craft room or your office or your dining room or your living room or your bedroom or wherever your craft room is because they just live permanently on your computer. So what I'm showing you here is my friend Hannah's website, Heartland Paper Co. And she has a few different dig different packs of digital stamps for you. Uh, she's got some leaves and some florals and things like that. And I'm just kind of showing you some of the ones that she offers right now. Um, but other than the fact that you don't get a physical product, you can use your digital, digital stamps almost the exact same way you use your regular stamps. Or your traditional stamps, I should say. So... When you're looking for digi stamps, if this is something you think you might be interested in, interested in, um, look through at Etsy. Um, there's you can just Google digital stamps if you're just looking to get your feet wet. A lot of places do offer free digital stamps, which is how I got started with digital stamps. It's just with free ones, and then I realized I really liked them, and it was a whole new world of possibilities uh, beyond the stamps I could get from physical companies, and I realized that there were more options out there than I knew I had. Now, generally, yes, I do still prefer to work with like a traditional clear stamp or a rubber stamp rather than a digital rather than a digital stamp, but I do really enjoy digital stamps. They are cheaper cuz there isn't a physical product attached. And you can really explore different art styles and things. And that was, that's intriguing to me as well. But I do still, I will admit, tend to go towards my regular, my uh, traditional stamps more than anything. But this also works. So if you're, how to get digi stamps, you know, Google is always number one. Google digital stamps, you'll find all kinds of them. A lot of companies that also offer traditional stamps do also offer digi stamps. You just got to look on the website for them. Um, but other than that, to buy them works just the same as... Any other stamp uh, online shopping experience you would have, you go to the website, you buy it. Uh, Etsy is another good one uh, for finding stamps. And you buy them, and then you download them, save them to your computer, and then you need some kind of processing program after that. So I use Microsoft Word. Uh, that's my preferred program. Uh, you can do them in Google Docs or different free pro like word editing program. Anywhere you can insert a picture is pretty much what you're looking for. Photoshop is also really good, especially if you want to get into layering digi stamps. So if you get your digi stamps in a PNG file rather than a JPEG file, uh, they don't have a background and you can layer them and make scenes and things. Uh, that's always kind of fun. And I will also have a few links in the description box below of different places you can get these stamps, uh, digi stamps from. And once you have it in your processing program, like I said, whatever it is, Google Docs, Microsoft Word, um, LibreOffice, Photoshop, GIMP, whatever processing program you're using, you can resize it, you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller, you can uh, make it really, really tiny if you want. So, when I made this video, I was first intending to just watercolor it, like, as a full, like, 8.5 by 11 piece, but I ended up deciding not to do that, and I did decide at the last minute to make it into a card, so you can see here, I just size it up, but I can size it down, I can make it smaller, um, you can, any size you want it to be, it can be, which is also an advantage to do stamps over traditional stamps, because sometimes you just don't have the room for that really nice big flower you have, but you want to use it, it's not going to work on this card. With a digi stamp, you can just whoop, shrink it down. Uh, so that is definitely one advantage to doing digi stamps. The other thing that's important with digi stamps is your printer, right? It's on your computer, that's great, but now you got to get it off your computer so that you can make it into a card. So printing them is de really depends on your printer. You have to know your printer. Uh, some printers can have handle the heavy cardstock that you would need to color it with Copics or... Um, well, pretty much that's the only thing that you use a really heavy cardstock for. 
and sometimes all you can get through your printer is copy paper so you kind of want to look for a printer that has a rear feed to it so that you can get your thicker paper through um, if you're going to do Copics with it some colored pencil papers may be thin enough to go through just a regular printer uh, without a rear feed depending again on what brand of paper you're doing and now you probably heard me mention I want to watercolor this watercolor paper and printers don't really get along uh, they're not very friendly with each other not to mention most printer inks which I'm going to talk about more in a second are not watercolor friendly like my printer the ink is not watercolor friendly if I tried to watercolor if I tried to print in watercolor I would just smear the ink everywhere which is not what we want <laughs> uh, and same thing with Copics you want to make sure your printer is Copic compatible as well as the ink is if you're going to go that route so my printer is a Canon Pixma and anything in that line will that ink is all works just fine with Copics it won't smear or anything like that but do try to remember to let it dry for about an hour before you color it because if the ink is wet it'll still smear but if the ink is wet it's going to smear no matter what you use so for today's rose I wanted to pretend I was Hannah and pretend like I could watercolor like she can which we all know I can't but I can try so <laughs> I wanted to watercolor this. I obviously couldn't put the watercolor paper through my printer. The ink's not watercolor compatible anyway, so I was like, okay, what can I do? Well, I have this Cricut Bright Pad, and I realized I could trace it. So I just have a Copic Multiliner here, and I'm just tracing the rose that Hannah drew onto my watercolor paper, which will let me watercolor the rose. So you can, you know, I have the Cricut bright pad. I know Caterpillar has the Caterpillar grow, Glow. I always say Grow. It's Caterpillar Glow. Uh, so any kind of light box you have. I used to have an old Fiskars one too. I don't have that one anymore. Uh, but something like this, some kind of light box, some kind of thing that will, sh you could do it with a window. <laughs> some kind of thing that will shine light through the back of your paper so that you can see the image underneath it and you can trace it. Just like I said, use some kind of uh, water uh, waterproof ink situation um, like the micron pens I know are waterproof I obviously use the multi-liner here uh, there's a lot of different options so I just taped used a purple tape to tape the rose to the or the watercolor paper to my copy paper I just printed it on copy paper and you can see I printed I also printed three different sizes of the rose because I didn't know what size I wanted to use at first when I first printed them so this way I could kind of look at my card and say, okay, I want to use this size. And I just, like I said, traced it on watercolor paper. And away we go. Now we get to watercolor it. So I'm not about to sit here and pretend like I know what I'm doing while I'm watercoloring this. So what I'm going, although I have taken a few classes with Hannah, so I know a few things. But like, a few things. And I don't practice nearly enough either. You heard that in my other coloring videos I've done where I say practice is important. Yeah, I haven't practiced my watercoloring enough to, like, honestly look at you guys and say, hey, yeah, I know what I'm doing. I'm going to teach you about this. No. This is not a watercolor video. It's a Did You See Him video. <laughs> so, basically, but I will say I just use the same kind of idea as I do with everything else where I go through the areas that I want darker and kind of shade those in and then come back with... A lighter color and do that so but you'll see like I don't get nearly as much detail as I can sometimes with my markers or my pencils or things like that but it's just practice and it's the same thing with digi stamps it's just practice so again like I said just to review some of the important things with digi stamps uh, you know find m make sure you know your printer uh, that's probably the most important thing don't if you want to cope with color your digi stamps, make sure your printer can handle the thicker paper. Make sure your printer ink won't smear. Um, I had another printer before the one I have now, which was an HP printer, and it didn't have the rear feet on it, and it the ink smeared like crazy uh, whenever I tried to color with Copics on it. So just you know, keep an eye out for that kind of stuff. Like I said, the Canon Pixma line, the Epson print ink I've heard is pretty good. Um, as far as Copics go, and I think there is a brand of Epson that is also 
water like waterproof ink uh, so maybe if your Copic markers and watercolor take a look at that line I don't know what it is off the top of my head you're gonna have to research that on your own um, but I I have heard that before um, but again like my primary thing is Copic so that was the that was my big thing uh, and like I said the Canon Pixma has not failed me yet and it prints on I mean I print my Copic stuff on Gina's 120 pound heavy base weight white cardstock and it handles just fine I've I don't know if I've I'm gonna jinx it now next time I print something it's gonna happen but I'm just thinking I don't know if I've ever had this printer jam ever I cannot remember it happening I've had other issues with it that were usually my fault but um, I don't think I've ever had it had it jam so and that's like thick paper. The other thing I have heard is some people, I've talked to a few people who have had luck with photo printers printing on the heavier cardstock. I don't know. I've never tried it. Um, but hey, if it works, that's awesome. Um, and like my, you know, my other thing with my Canon Pixma printer that's really nice is I don't necessarily have to print on an eight and a half by 11 sheet I usually do just for ease and because I use Word as my processing program so I know it's going to come out as an eight and a half by 11 sheet anyway uh, but if you're going to do Photoshop or GIMP or something or you can like change your canvas size before you print it you could make your paper tray smaller and print and not use the whole sheet of cardstock but you can always cut it up and then use the um, scraps for something else the other thing too I would maybe suggest that I didn't do in this case but if you were going to do the watercolor thing, and you were going to trace it so you could watercolor it, you could print your image on your Copic paper or your colored pencil paper or whatever, and then you could just use, you'd have both that way, so you could, you know, trace your watercolor one, watercolor that one, and then color the original one you printed with your Copic. And I should have done that, but I just wasn't thinking about it when I was more focused on filming than I was, uh the future of what I was doing so I just printed it on copy paper so I ended up actually throwing that out but um you could totally do it like print it on your Copic paper if you have a printer that can do it so and I along those lines let's say you don't have a printer that can handle Copics don't let that discourage you from using digi stamps because you could also do this to color with Copic those Copic multi liners I don't know if the Micron pens are but the Copic multi-liners, I know are Copic compatible ink. So if you don't have a printer that can handle the Copic, uh, you know, paper or that high weight paper, uh, you could also do what I did, print it on copy paper that your printer will handle and then trace. Um, just kind of a way to circumvent the system if you want to do something different. So we're wrapping it up now. I think, I hope... You know, this gives you to give DigiStamps a try, wander into that world. Like I said, I'll have some shops listed in the link below, including the link to Hannah's store with this rose. And I think that's all I got for you today. So thank you so much for watching, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment down below. And I will see you again soon. Have a crafty day!